Hi guys, this is Creative Cuts, channel where I build, paint and create things. I hope you're all well today and feeling good. My hobby took a slight detour for this video as I had a painting itch that I wanted to scratch. As some of you will know, I've been working on a nice little Necron army on the side. This army is mainly made up of second-hand models, but with some love and care, they are looking pretty sweet even if I do say so myself. I would purchased and put together this figure as a centerpiece for my army, the mighty Catan Shard of the Void Dragon. But it wasn't very mighty, it just sat on the shelf collecting dust. So I decided it was time to paint this beautiful model. And just as I was about to dip my brush in some paint, I had a brainwave. Where this idea came from, I don't know. Maybe it was because I was thinking about what colour to paint the energy currents on the model. But I decided to really give this model some energy. All three volts of energy. The model is such that there are pieces missing from the sculpt where, in my imagination, the model is literally morphing in and out of reality. These would prove easy access points to insert some wires. I needed to cut a panel away that was big enough to fit in a mini LED and some wiring. Obviously this would have been much easier had I had this idea before assembling the model, but that's not how ideas work. I found a suitable spot and carefully began to cut away a piece of the model's leg. For the LED I had a simple low tech solution which would still allow for easy access to change a battery. I used a small 3 volt battery pack and a small LED, that's all. The battery pack had a small inbuilt switch and will hide in the base of the model nicely. I needed to drill a small hole in the base to thread the wires through. I soldered my wires to the LED and decided to paint the LED turquoise as I wanted a slight blue tinge to the light. I inserted this into the hollow space in the model and glued the piece of leg back on. But now I had two big wires hanging out the back of my model. Fear not. I thought I could disguise these with some extra energy volts. Some fine wire was perfect for this. I began the slow process of slowly attaching bits of wire and gluing crushed up bits of cork tile to these. The model already had chunks of earth and stone flying around so I thought a few more wouldn't hurt. The hard part was knowing when to stop. So when I was happy I switched to some green stuff to give the wires some mass. With the base looking good, it was time to start painting. I gave it a couple of light coats of Pro Acryl Black Primer. And then came in with some thinned white primer from above. This not only really helps pick out the details, but also gives a lighter base for the lighter colours to really shine on. I took care at this stage to try to really pick out the muscle structure in a realistic way. Next I painted all of the energy white again, to let the paint glow with a good base. In terms of colour scheme, this was already decided as I wanted this model to very much fit in to my existing army. Blues and turquoise it is then. I already knew the recipe to get the colours right so it was just a matter of repeating these steps with the odd twist here and there. Step 1, paint the model in nylac oxide. This is a great semi-opaque paint, usually used as a wash, but 
here it gives me a lovely base coat, letting the zenith or highlight shine through. Next I added some pterodon turquoise to give this some depth. This again was not used as intended, but in this case a more highly pigmented wash thinned with some water. I also added some base colours, purple and a deep bronze for the wings. I wanted to tie the lightning to the model, so I added some turquoise to the lowest part of the lightning and gradually faded this up so it got lighter. I based in some rocks and then realised that I had got a little carried away and needed to work on the base a bit more. This is definitely not the conventional order of doing things, but there's nothing conventional about this build so far, so, so why start now, right? I extended the existing base with some more dirt and small stones held in place with some PVA glue. I quickly paint this up to match what I'd already painted and voila, it's as if I never forgot to do the base at all. Next I wanted to add some detail to the lightning. It looked cool but I wanted a bit more pop. So I went back a couple of steps and grabbed my white and added this to selected parts of the lightning. With these washed in again with my light turquoise colour, I was able to achieve much more colour variation in the lightning. To keep all the parts of the model moving along, I picked out a lovely transparent purple and used this for my shadow colour on my figure. I also came back over this with some bright pale green, again from Pro Acryl. Easy does it, but with a light touch I can really see this bottle coming together nicely. I kept tinkering away with my airbrush, adding a little white here and there, pick out the odd glow, knowing I can always knock this back with some more of my light turquoise wash. The battery pack was a bit proud of my model space, and this annoyed me greatly. So I cut a small donut type shape out of MDF and painted this black. For once I decided to wear a glove for this step and not get my hands completely covered in black primer. Occasionally our repeated mistakes allow us to learn something. I added a few more details here and there and Overall, felt really proud of my progress so far. But, there was still one thing bugging me. The lightning still looked a little flat. So, I bravely decided to add in that same transparent purple I used to shade the figure with. This would allow for some visual separation between the model and the lightning, whilst still maintaining a unity in the overall piece. If you have liked this video, then there are many ways you can show your support. There is even a button below specifically dedicated to this purpose. You can subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest videos and perhaps share it with a friend who might enjoy it too. Lastly, as with every model, and my favourite part because it means the model is nearly finished, a nice clean line of black around the base. I did also add some orange and brown pigment powder to match the bases on the rest of my army. And that about wraps it up. To go all in a model was definitely not on my to-do list. But when the urge grabs hold, it's best to go with it. You never know where the journey will take you. Thank you for watching and enjoy.